The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit, and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. In this video, we're gonna learn about accelerometers. Accelerometers are used to detect motion and orientation. You can use an accelerometer to wake up an Arduino when it's tapped or picked up by someone. They can also detect when a device is falling. Computers have accelerometers to turn off the hard drive if it's dropped. They're also used in smartphones to turn off the display after it hasn't been moved in a while. The accelerometer we're going to look at is the ADXL345. Mine is a breakout module from Adafruit. This is the sensor chip right here. These are directional arrows that show you where each axis points. The x-axis points in this direction. The y-axis points in this direction. And the z-axis points up. The ADXL345 can communicate with the Arduino over SPI and I2C. In this video we're going to use I2C, but SPI is an option if you want to use it. Up here at the top we have the VN pin, where the 5 volt power connects. One down from that is the 3.3 volt pin. You can power the ADXL345 with either 3.3 volts or 5 volts. This is where the 3.3 volt power source would connect. Here's the ground pin. This is the CS pin, or chip select pin, for connecting it with SPI. The ADXL345 has two interrupt pins, INT1 and INT2. These can be used to trigger hardware interrupts on the Arduino. This is the SDO, or Slave Data Output pin. It functions the same as a MISO pin which transmits data from the sensor to the Arduino over SPI. Now we have the two I2C pins, SDA and SCL. The SDA pin doubles as the MOSI pin for SPI. And the SCL pin doubles as the SCLK pin for SPI. Acceleration is the rate of increase or decrease of velocity. When you're driving in your car and you step on the gas, your car has a positive acceleration. When you step on the brakes, it has a negative acceleration. Accelerometers measure both static acceleration and dynamic acceleration. Static acceleration is caused by forces like gravity. Dynamic acceleration is caused by forces of motion like the acceleration from a car speeding up or slowing down. Two common units of acceleration are meters per second squared and g's. One g is defined as the rate of acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. The ADXL345 outputs separate acceleration measurements for each axis, x, y, and z. The ADXL345 measures acceleration by detecting changes in capacitance, 
Along each axis, there's a tiny plate suspended between two micro springs that can move back and forth. The mobile plate and the fixed plate are charged, so an electric field is formed between them. When the accelerometer is at rest, the electrical field between the plates is constant. When the sensor accelerates, the mobile plate moves and the distance between the plates changes. Capacitance is a function of the distance between two charge plates. So when the distance between the plates changes, the electrical field between the plates also changes. The sensor measures this change in capacitance and calculates an acceleration value. There are a few different kinds of accelerometers you can get for the Arduino. The main difference between them is sensitivity. An accelerometer's sensitivity is usually provided in Gs. Some accelerometers can measure acceleration between plus or minus 1 G. Other accelerometers can measure acceleration up to plus or minus 250 Gs. The smaller the acceleration range, the more sensitive the sensor. To detect small taps or vibrations, you would probably want an accelerometer with a range of about 2 Gs. To detect something much stronger, like a rocket launch or a collision, you would probably want a range closer to 250 Gs. The ADXL345 has four different ranges that you can select. Plus or minus 2 Gs, plus or minus 4 Gs, plus or minus 8 Gs, and plus or minus 16 Gs. In the sketch we're going to use in a minute, you'll be able to set the sensitivity. Now let's connect the accelerometer to the Arduino and take a look at the raw values it provides. We're going to connect the accelerometer with I2C, so the wiring is pretty simple. Ground connects to ground, and VCC connects to 5 volts. The SDA pin of the accelerometer connects to analog pin A4 on the Arduino and the SCL pin of the accelerometer connects to analog pin A5 on the Arduino. To program it, we're going to need a library. SparkFun has a great one with a lot of useful functions. You can download it from this link. Once you get that installed, we can take a look at the sketch. This sketch will output the raw accelerometer readings to the serial monitor. The first thing we do is include the SparkFun ADXL345 library with a hash include sparkfun underscore ADXL345.h. Next we create an object called ADXL, which is a member of the ADXL345 class. We set that object equal to the function ADXL345. The ADXL345 function configures the communication mode the sensor will use to talk to the Arduino. When there are no arguments passed to the function, as in this case, the sensor will use I2C to communicate with the Arduino. If you're using SPI though, put the number 10 in here. We're using I2C, so we can leave this empty. Now we declare a variable called range. This will store the sensitivity range we want the ADXL345 to have. It can be either 2, 4, 8, or 16 Gs. In the setup section, we initialize the serial monitor with serial begin 9600. Now we initialize the ADXL345 with the function power on. This function is applied to the ADXL object, which we created up here. Next, we call the set range setting function to set the sensitivity range of the sensor. We pass it the range variable, which stores the range setting we defined when we declared it. That's all the setup we need to do. In the loop section, the first thing we have to do is declare some variables that will hold the sensor readings. The ADXL345 outputs separate acceleration measurements for each axis, 
so we need a unique variable for each axis. Here I've declared three int variables, x, y, and z. Next, we get the sensor readings from the accelerometer with the read excel function. The arguments are the variables that hold the axis measurements. It doesn't matter what you name these variables. The only thing that matters is the order that they're entered into the function. The x-axis values will be stored in the variable you put in the first parameter. The y-axis values will be stored in the variable in the second parameter. And the z-axis values will be stored in the variable you put as the third parameter. Now all we have to do is print the variables. It'll be easier to see if we print all the axes on one line. So I print an x equals with serial print. Then I print the x variable. Same thing for the y and z variables. Print a y, then print the y variable. And a z, then print the z variable. The z variable is the last thing we print on the line, so we use serial print line. Then we delay 250 milliseconds to slow down the output a bit. Okay, let's check this out. I've got my ADXL 345 connected to my Arduino. I also attached the sensor to a block of wood, so it's easier to see which axis is which. You can see the sensor is outputting values close to zero for the X and Y axes, but the Z axis is outputting a value around 230. The force of gravity is creating an acceleration vector along the Z axis. If I turn the sensor so that the Y axis is perpendicular to the ground, it'll measure the acceleration from gravity along the Y axis. Of course, you can also create acceleration yourself. Watch the values of the X and Y axes when I move the sensor around. These values aren't like other raw ADC values we've seen when we read voltages. Those values were always between 0 and 1023. The numbers you see here are in 2's complement format. 2's complement is a way to represent signed or negative numbers in binary. We can convert these 2's complement values to G's with the conversion factors in the datasheet. In the specifications table on page 3, there's a section called sensitivity. This section has the scale factors for each sensitivity range. To get the acceleration readings in G's, we need to multiply the sensor's 2's complement output by one of these scale factors. Each sensitivity range has a different scale factor. This is the scale factor for the plus or minus 2G sensitivity range. Here's the scale factor when the range is plus or minus 4G's, 8G's, and 16G's. Now let's look at a sketch that outputs the accelerometer readings in G's. Actually, this sketch is going to output the sensor readings in milli G's. If you want the output in G's though, divide the milli G's reading by 1000. The first half of the sketch is the same as the raw data sketch. We include the SparkFun ADXL 345 library, create the ADXL object, and configure I2C communication. Define the range variable. Initialize the serial monitor, initialize the sensor, and set the range. In the loop, we still declare x, y, and z variables, and get the readings for each axis with the read excel function. 
Now we convert the raw sensor readings to Gs by multiplying the raw sensor readings by the scale factor. The scale factor is going to be different depending on which range setting we choose. So this is a good place for a switch case statement. We can use the switch statement and put the range variable as the condition. Each case statement will define what happens when the range is set to 2, 4, 8, or 16 Gs. When the range variable is equal to 2, the code in the first case will be executed. The scale factor for 2G sensitivity is 3.9, so we have to multiply the output from each axis by 3.9. Then we have the break keyword, so the program exits the case. Now we have case statements for all the other possible values of the range variable. When the range is set to 4 Gs, the scale factor is 7.8, so we multiply each axis output by 7.8. When the range is set to 8 Gs, the scale factor is 15.6, so we multiply all three axis variables by 15.6. And when the range is set to 16 Gs, the scale factor is 31.2, so we have to multiply everything by 31.2. Then we have a default statement at the end, in case the range variable was set equal to something different than 2, 4, 8, or 16. The default code prints a line that says, please specify a range of 2, 4, 8, or 16 Gs. Now we print the X, Y, and Z variables to the serial monitor. We print some text that says X equals, then print the X variable. We print some text that says Y equals, and print the Y variable. Same thing for Z, and print line the Z variable. Then we delay for 250 milliseconds. Let's take a look at how this works. So now the acceleration readings from each axis are in milli-Gs instead of 2's complement. The z-axis value is around 910 milli-Gs. That's pretty close to 1G, which is the acceleration due to gravity. If your sensor readings seem a bit off, your sensor might need to be calibrated. There's a good SparkFun tutorial that shows you how to calibrate an ADXL345. Visit this link to check it out. Accelerometers measure acceleration along the x, y, and z axes. But in the next video, we're going to look at gyroscopes, which measure rotation around the X, Y, and Z axes. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.